Hello and welcome back once again. So today's video, I'll be dealing with competency-based assessment. So let me take you to the roadmap of my presentation. So first, I'll be dealing with the concept that is meaning of competency. Second, I'll talk about the types that is different competencies. Third, I will discuss the techniques to measure competencies. Today's video, I'll be dividing into two parts. That is, in the first part, I will discuss about the concept. In the second part, I will talk about the types and the techniques. So let me take you to the first topic, that is the concept. So here, I will say that competency is the capability to apply or use a set of related knowledge, skills, and abilities required to successfully perform a task. Now, a person acquires the knowledge from various sources, that is from parents, from teachers, from their peers, from uh, by reading a book, by browsing the net, or um, by observing um, around the environment, or by perceiving information from the environment, or even through experience. Now, this knowledge, when you're practically implementing this knowledge in, uh, in order to perform a task successfully, that is called as competence. Now, having understood the concept of competence, let us not discuss the principles that one needs to follow while implementing competency-based learning. The first principle is we have to give equal opportunity to all the students in, all, in order to express their views, their opinions, or clarify their doubts. Second, the test has that is designed by the teacher should be measurable so that the learners know to what extent they have performed. Third, as a teacher, when I design a task, I need to also formulate certain rubrics on the basis of which the learner will be evaluated. And these rubrics have to be shared with the learners so that the learners are able to um, prepare according to the requirements of the task. Next is there should be continuous teaching and peer support in the sense um, that uh, the teacher while teaching should not only uh, consider uh, imparting information that is a one-way teaching process whereby the teacher imparts information and the learner listens because in this process there is a possibility that as the learners are not involved uh, they could get distracted in a variety of ways so the teacher has to think of different methods whereby the learners are involved in the teaching learning process and also allow uh, the learners uh, to work in groups or to work in pairs so that there is peer support also in the learning process that is the peers of also help the learners to understand the concept in a better way. Next, there should be continuous assessments. So the assessment should not be only held at one particular time or that is the end of the year or the end of the semester. So during the particular semester, during the particular year, so within periodically the assessment should be conducted. And of course, these assessments you know, will help the teacher evaluate the progress of the learner in the acquisition of the skills. Next is uh, the learner should be allowed to demonstrate the skills in a multiple of ways. Uh, that is, um, the task has to be designed in such a way so that uh, the teacher takes into consideration the different learning styles of the learners. And on the basis of that, there could be a variety of ways that the teacher can assess the learners. So having understood the principles, now let me take you uh, to an example. So in this example, it will be very clear what is the meaning of competence. So here we have a girl who wants to learn how to ride the bicycle. So as a teacher, I give her all the knowledge that is required to ride the bicycle. For example, I say that this is uh, how to sit in the bicycle, how to you, uh, use the handle, how to hold the handle, how to use the pedal, how to balance the cycle, and also how to follow the traffic rules, how to concentrate on the road while riding the bicycle. So this is the knowledge. And uh, and I expect that once the as a teacher, I have given all the information required required to ride the bicycle, uh, the learner has acquired the skill of uh, uh, riding the bicycle. Now, when I actually want to test the learner, you know, I evaluate the learner on the basis of the performance. So the actual performance could be something like this. So it could be a disaster. Uh, so as a teacher, most of the time, I evaluate the learner by saying that the learner has not acquired the skills. But it could be something uh, different because the learner might have acquired the skills, but then uh, the actual performance has turned out to be this uh, because of a variety of reasons. The reasons could be uh, that uh, maybe the learner was unwell at that particular moment. 
or it could be that suddenly there was a noise and the, the learner got distracted or there was a pothole on the road and the learner did not see. So now the competence is uh, the knowledge that is there in the mind of the learners or the knowledge that is um, imbibed in the learner and the learner has to use this knowledge in order to perform um, the task that is riding the bicycle on the basis of which he will be evaluated. But uh, the performance could be disastrous at, uh, 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 at uh, one particular time. So it doesn't mean that the learner has not acquired the skills. So the, the skills have been acquired, but the way it has been performed could be different due to a variety of reasons. So as a teacher, I do not give importance uh, to the fact that the, what could be the reasons behind this performance. And so therefore, my assessment of the learner um, it could be wrong. So thus, I would say that competence is uh, the ability or the knowledge of the learners on the, in the acquisition of the skills. And uh, we cannot say that the learner do not have the knowledge, they have all the knowledge, but the performance is applying the knowledge in different situation in order to solve a task. So if we give importance to the fact that this performance of the learner could be evaluated in a variety of ways rather than in one single method, then obviously we'll get a better understanding of the learner's acquisition of the skills. So having understood the difference between competence and performance, I would now like to thank all of you for your patient listening. I hope you have understood the concept. So in my next video, I'll be dealing with uh, the uh, different types of competency and the techniques to measure the competencies. Thank you once again.